Alrighty, so today we're looking at the backspin. So why would you want to learn some of these skills? Well, they look awesome. They really do. And when you start to interplay some of these very basic skills and some of the more advanced skills, then you can really sort of see how good they look. Number two, if for those of you who are into medieval reenactment, perhaps you'd like to learn, or maybe you've bought a sword and you don't want it to just be a wall hanger, then I strongly recommend learning some of these skills because um, uh, it makes you look a bit more kind of imposing to your opponent. Number three, it's for safety. So by learning some of these skills, we're learning the situational and spatial awareness of where your sword is at any given time and where your sword is in relation to your hand. So you don't need to think about it too much. It simply becomes an instinctive movement. Alrighty guys, before we get into training today, I'd just like to add a couple of points that are really important. Number one, always train with a proper training sword or training weapon, okay? So uh, please don't train with a live blade such as a sharp sword or an axe or something like that. It's only going to end in disaster. This is a cold steel medieval training sword and it, not only does it perform like a real sword, but it looks really good but it's safe to train with. And you are gonna injure yourself if you do train with a, a live blade whilst doing this kind of thing. You may also notice that um, some of these sword skills are different depending on the different type of sword you're using. So perhaps you're using a katana, maybe you're using a, a one and a half handed sword, that kind of thing. It is going to be slightly different depending on the type of sword you're using. Let's take a quick look. from a different angle. And again. All right, so what's actually happening here? We've raised the sword into our start position. My stance, I've got an open stance with my feet. My legs are slightly apart. My knees are slightly bent. I'm in a comfortable position and I can react really quickly. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise my sword and I'm gonna put my palm out with my fingers slightly open. I'm gripping the sword with my thumb and forefinger whilst my remaining three fingers are slightly loose on the blade. I still have full control of my weapon. That's really important. Okay, so let's do that a few times just to get a bit of an understanding of and, and trust in the weapon, trust in yourself so that when you open your fingers, you know the sword is not simply gonna fall out of your hands. I'm using my forearm muscles I'm engaging my core, engaging my back muscles. Step three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sword slightly away from me at about a 45 degree angle. So let's put those things together. So we're raising the sword, fingers open, and pivoting the sword to around about 45 degrees. We're doing those three steps together, raising the sword, opening the fingers, and pivoting the sword. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate pushing the sword so that the sword now drops. So, raise, open fingers, pivot the sword, and drop the sword. Like so. Now this may feel a little bit strange if you haven't used a sword before and that's okay. As you get used to it and you'll find that uh, 
as you get used to it, it the skill becomes more instinctive and more natural. So, raise, fingers, pivot, drop. Let's do those things together. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop. Let's turn that into one motion. Okay, now let's finish off the skill. So raise, fingers, pivot, drop, raise. And then grip the sword again. So raise, fingers, pivot, drop, raise. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop, raise. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop, raise. There we go. So really not that hard. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop and raise. And there we go. Now you may find, depending on the type of sword you're using, it's going to depend upon the weight. Ideally, you're looking for a sword, if you're looking to, to, to learn it, it's in medieval type of swords. Ideally, you're looking for a weapon that is around about 1.2 to 1.5 kilos. I find anything more than 1.5 kilos as a one, one and a half handed sword to be too much. The balance is usually wrong, the width and the weight of the sword is wrong, and it just doesn't work with my mechanics. Now I've got shoulder injuries and shoulder problems from my military career, so that probably feeds into that a little bit, but most actual historical blades that date back to the early medieval period were in fact around about 1 a kilo, 1.2 kilos, and maybe a bit heavier depending on the sort of materials they were made from, but they were designed to be light, they were designed to be uh, flexible, fast blades. So let's go guys, let's keep that together. Raise, fingers, pivot, drop and raise, grip. There we go, nice and simple. And that all feeds into some of the other skills that we're gonna be learning. So what I want you to do is practice for about a week or so every single day, some of these very basic skills, and then we'll get into some of the harder skills. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.